Good morning and welcome back to The Longing. Uh, I'm currently recording this at 10am because I'm going to be out for the day. So let's get this going and let's continue reading Metamorphoses where we should hopefully finish, uh, finish today. Now while a lustful god with speedy pace just thought to strain her in a strict embrace. He filled his arms with reeds new rising on the place, and he sighs his ill success to find. The tender canes were shaken by the wind, and breathed a mournful air unheard before. That much surprising pan yet pleased him more. Admiring this new music, thou, he said, who canst not be the partner of my bed, at least shall be the comfort of my mind, and often, often to lips be joined, to my lips be joined. He formed the reeds proportioned as they are, unequal in their length, and waxed with care. They still retain the name of his ungrateful fair, while Hermes piped and sung and told his tale. The keeper's winking eyes began to fail, and drowsy slumber on the lids to creep, till all the watchman was at length asleep. Then soon the god his voice and sung up suppressed, and with his powerful rod confirmed his rest. Without delay his crooked falchion drew, and at one fatal stroke the keeper slew. Down from the rock fell the deceived head, dissevered head, sorry, opening its eyes in death and falling bled, and marked the passage with crimson trail, thus Argus lies in pieces cold and pale, and all his hundred eyes with all their light are closed at once in one perpetual night. These Juno takes that they no more may fail, and spreads them in her peacock's gaudy tail. Impatient to revenge her injured bed, she wreaks her anger on her rival's head, with furious frights from her native home, and drives her gadding round the world to roam, nor ceased her madness and her flight before. She touched the limits of the Farian shore. At length arriving on the banks of Nile, wearied with lengths length of ways and worn with toil. She laid her down and leaning on her knees, invoked the cause of all her miseries, and cast her languishing regards above for help from heaven and her ungrateful Jove. She sighed, she wept, she lowed. Twas all she could, and with unkindness seemed to tax the god. Last with a humble prayer she begged repose, or death at least, to finish all her woes. Jove heard her vows, and with a flattering look, in her behalf to jealous Juno spoke. He cast his arms about her neck, and said, Dame, rest secure, no more th thy nuptial bed. This nymph shall violate, by sticks I swear, and every oath that binds the thunderer. The goddess was appeased, at, and at the world was Io to her former shape restored. The rugged hair began to fall away, the sweetness of her eyes did only stay. Though not so large her crooked horns decrease, the wideness of her jaws and nostrils cease, her hooves to hands return in little space, the five long taper fingers take their place, and nothing of the heifer now is seen beside the native whiteness of the skin. Erected on her feet she walks again, and to the duty of the four sustain. She tries her tongue, her silence softly breaks, and fears her former lowings when she speaks. A goddess now, through all the Egyptian state, and served by priests who in white linen wait. Her son was Epaphus, at length he believed, the son of Jove, and as God, and as a god received. With sacrifice adored and public prayers, he common temples with his mother's shares. Equal in years and rival in renown, 
with Epaphus the youthful Phaeton, like honor claims, and like honor claims and boasts his sire the son, his haughty looks and his assuming air, the son of Isis could no longer bear. Thou talkst thy mother's word too far, said he, and hast usurped thy boasted pedigree. Go, base pretender, to a borrowed name. This text he blushed with anger and with shame. But shame repress, repressed his rage, the daunted youth, soon seeks his mother and inquires the truth. Mother, said he, this infamy was thrown by Epaphus on you and me, your son. He spoke in public, told it to my face, nor durst I vindicate the dire disgrace. Even I, the bold, the sensible of wrong, restrained by shame, was forced to hold my tongue. To hear open slander is a curse, but not to find an answer is a worse. If I am heaven begot, assert your son, by some sure sign, and make my father known, to write my honour and redeem your own. He said, and saying, cast his arms about her neck, and begged her to resolve the doubt. Tis hard to judge if Clymene were moved, more by his prayer, whom she so dearly loved, or more with fury furred to find her name, traduced and made the sport of common fame. She stretched her arms to heaven and fixed her eyes on that fair planet that adorns the skies. Now by those beams, said she, whose holy fires consume my breast and kindle my desires, by him who sees us both and clears our sight, by him the public minister of light. I swear that sun begot thee if I lie, let him his cheerful influence deny. Let him no more this perjured creature see, and shine on all the world, but only me. If still your doubt, you doubt your mother's innocence, his eastern mansion is not far from hence. With little pains you, you to his leave go, and from himself your parentage may know. With joy the ambitious youth his mother heard, and eager for the journey soon prepared. He longs the world beneath him to survey, to guide the chariot and to give the day. From Mero's burning sands he bends his course, nor less in India feels his father's force. His travel urging till he came in sight, and saw the palace by the purple light. End. Well, that's Metamorphosis done. I have to be honest, I didn't really l enjoy the uh, the pacing of that one, trying to figure out where the uh, sort of rhythm was meant to be, because it was... I, I understood that it was meant to be the, a capital letter. Generally, that was where the um, end point for a sentence was, line, was meant to be. But it was kind of difficult with all the names in there that are also capitalised and such. Um, and the other bits and pieces in there just to throw me off balance a little bit every now and again. Um, but we did it. We read it. Which means we've read The Goose Girl, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Poems 2, Metamorphosis, Six Swans, apparently. Which means next is probably Fables 1. Ah, Aesop's Fables, 109 pages. So yeah, we'll probably do Fables 1. And I do at some point want to get through Moby Dick. Though that one I might actually plan ahead and do... And do like a chapter at a time. And work out where the chapter ends. Ahead of time and see whether it's worth doing it in just 10 minute increments or um, actual chapters. Um... Just to see how how it's how long it's going to take because that was forty nine pages that took us 
five episodes, six episodes or something. Um, so that, so that's about just just under fifty minutes, something like that. Fifty minutes or something. Probably more like forty five. 4550 um, including intros and outros yeah yeah I'll figure it out but I do want to do uh, I do want to read Moby Dick before moving on to the next page of uh, books that we have because we've actually gained quite a few now and I do want to get through Moby Dick because I've never read Moby Dick I've never read Moby Dick and for that one there is a chance that I may just read the whole thing in one go like go and sit in the halls of eternity read the whole thing in one go maybe not in one go but like Oh, I can't just go sit in the halls of eternity, can I? <laughs> well, I'll have to figure that out. But anyway, for now, um, I'm going to say goodbye because I'm doing this before I go out for the day. So thank you very much for joining me today. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon or night, no matter what time of day it is. Have a wonderful one of it. And as always, I'll be back tomorrow with more of The Longing. Goodbye. <laughs>